thank you so much for joining me to talk about bullet journaling. And I would like to thank the group that did the workshop with me live last week. They were amazing and we discussed all things bullet journals like layouts and spreads and the way we use them. And we had such a good time that they asked me to make a recording for our YouTube page. So here I am. And the first question that many of you may have today is, Miss, what's a bullet journal? So I know it sounds like a lot of hype, but it really, really is a tool for a better, more productive, happier, relaxed life. Um, as you can see from the picture, there's a lot of journals on um, blank books. And so what we have now is this analog system that is going to make your Google Calendar, if not unnecessary, but definitely not as much fun. Um, and it's going to be just a wonderful place to keep everything that's important and everything in your life in one place. So why bullet journal? Um, of course, you wanna stay organized. And if you're looking to meet new goals or if you're working on projects or habits, this is a wonderful way to make sure that you're on track. If you've got some writer's block or maybe you're stuck mid project, you don't know where to take something, the bullet journal is a great tool to help you get out of that rut and to get you back on track. You can play with all sorts of creative ideas and keep lists of things that interest you, whether it's books or movies or really anything. Maybe you're keeping track of your current craft project or maybe you know, you're keeping track of plans for a trip, whatever interests you, there is a place in your bullet journal for it. So you may ask now, Melissa, how did this become a thing? How did this become a trend? And we really can't talk about that unless we talk about where it all began. And that is with Ryder Carroll and his bullet journaling system. Like we said, it is an analog system. The original bullet journal system that he presented to the world is much less um, an artistic venture, then it is a very minimalistic and structured way of making plans and ways of um, tracking how you're accomplishing things. But again, we couldn't get from there to where we are today. And where we are today from Ryder is just, it just goes to show how bullet journaling is truly for everyone. You make it what you really want to it to be in order for it to work for your life. So let's watch what Ryder did because like I said, we can't talk about bullet journaling without giving credit where credit is due. And it was because of him that we have this amazing tool in our lives, but don't get stressed out. If this isn't working for you as you're watching it, that's okay. Just see what it has to do and how he does it. And then we will definitely be talking about making bullet journaling your own in a couple of minutes. So here is where the bullet journal started. We keep track of the things we do, want to do, have done, things we ate, miles we've run, ideas we had, it gets out of control. There are plenty of apps for that, but I needed a system flexible enough to handle whatever it is I threw at it and fast enough that it would never get in the way. Hi, my name is Ryder and this is a brief overview of bullet journaling. It's an analog system I devised that will help you track the past, organize the present, and plan for the future. Sound good? Let's go. The first thing you want to do is create an index page. This page will help you find your entries, but more on that later. Turn to your first blank spread. This is your monthly calendar. Add the name of the month on both pages. The left will be your actual calendar. Write down all the dates of the month on the left. Then add the first letter of the days next to the dates. The right page is your task list. It will list all the things that you need to get done. Left of each task, add a task bullet, which is simply an empty checkbox. Now that you've finished setting up your month, flip back to the index and add the month with its page numbers. Over time, this will help you organize your bullet journal. Once you're done adding the month to the index, go to the next available spread. This will be your daily calendar. Every day, write down the things you need to get done as they happen. Don't worry if you miss a couple days here and there. The bullet journal gets its name from the bullets. There are three main kinds, tasks, events, and notes. Tasks you've already seen. Events are signified by a circle and notes with a dot. 
They will help you log different kinds of data quickly and distinguish between them. To give a bull priority, simply place a star to the left of it. When you're done with a task, just check off the box. If a bullet becomes irrelevant, just strike it through. As you log events, be sure to add them to that month's calendar page. Over time, it will give you a solid overview of what happened month to month. At the end of the month, create the next month's calendar. The setup is the same as before, except for one critical difference. Go through all the pages of the previous month and check your tasks. If it's done, cross it off. If the task is now irrelevant, strike it out. But if it still needs to be done, migrate it into the new month's task list. As you migrate tasks, put a little right arrow in the checkbox to remind you that you've moved the task forward. When you're done setting up your month, be sure to add it to the index. Weeding out your tasks every month can be the difference between being busy and being productive. Sometimes tasks will be related. When this is the case, you can create a collection. To do this, find the next blank page and give your collection an appropriate title with a page number. Find and migrate all related tasks into the list and add the collection to your index. Well, that's it for the basic overview. I hope it's been helpful. If so, please like and share this video. The Bullet Journal is an ever-evolving system. To check out many more tips and tricks, please visit bulletjournal.com. Thank you for watching. So now we have seen Rider's system, and you can check out Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Google, there are a million places we will talk about in a little while to get great ideas. Pinterest is a great to get a visual. And as you can see here, this is a screenshot with the search bullet journal inspiration, just to kind of give you an idea of how some people have made bullet journaling their own. So what do you actually need to start a bullet journal? A simple notebook doesn't have to be fancy. In my classes, I usually hand out either a spiral notebook or a composition notebook and a pencil. That is absolutely all you will ever need to bullet journal. It does not have to be fancy. It does not have to cost money. It can be done with things that you already have in your home. I do suggest that when you very first start out that you do use a plain notebook and a pencil so that way you can play with spread ideas and different things um, for a list and categories and collections that you might want to try out even if it's your daily or your weekly planner so that way you work with it until it becomes what you love and what you want and a lot of times when people buy a fancy bound journal they don't want to do that right away because who wants to make a mess out of it or i know myself um bullet journaling has been great for me because i'm not such a perfectionist anymore um before i would never be able to use a bound notebook just for those reasons um because i would be afraid it would become too messy and it would just drive me nuts so this has been a great exercise in patience and growth for me um we'll talk about in a minute about what i use but there's something very important to remember we are going to be talking about a lot of the popular accessories and tools that you're here all about online when people are talking about bullet journaling literally this is all you need and this is what you need to keep in mind when you are bullet journaling this is my favorite quote that i found recently I have come to the conclusion that buying craft supplies and actually using them are two separate hobbies. And I believe that bullet journaling is absolutely the master of being able to buy a million supplies that you do or don't use. So start out really simply until you figure out what you like. But I know that a lot of people came tonight to hear about what people are using in their bullet journals. So let's talk about the tools of the trade. Um, these are the tools that people who are obsessed with bullet journaling usually talk about. So a high-end bound notebook um, with really quality paper. Um, the first one is Scribbles That Matter, and I will do a screenshot of some of mine in a moment. Um, that is the general Scribbles That Matter um, 
notebook. You can see that it has imprinted all fun designs on the front. They also have a professional one, which is what I buy because it is plain on the front and the back. And uh, I have used vinyl stickers on mine in the past. Um, to kind of make it my own and I will do a shot of those in just a moment. Um, but what I love about the scribbles that matters is that the pages are so creamy and thick and they don't, you don't see the writing through them. I am a very much a minimalist in my bullet journaling because I don't have the artistic talents that you see from so many of these online community members. Um, but I will also show you what I do in mine is I will glue in a lot of things and uh, especially quotes. Um, I also use washi tape to pretty it up. And here you go. So we have washi tape. And in a minute, what I will do is I will go back and I will take a couple of pictures of some of my washi tapes. Uh, there are some really great places. You can get washi tape pretty much anywhere now, but the prices vary greatly. The dollar store is a great place to get it. They don't have the hugest selection at times, but it's only a dollar and it's great. There is a website from China called Alibaba and they are listed later. There's resources at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, but the they have, you can get amazing deals on washi tape from them. Uh, Wish.com also has some amazing deals. I can tell you that I've used Alibaba personally and loved it. I have not used Wish, so I cannot vouch for the quality um but with alibaba you have to be aware that it does take 30 to 60 days for a lot of their orders to come in because they are coming from out of the country and processing time so if you need something right away that is definitely not the site that you want to use but if you're just looking to get something to build up your washi tape collection they are absolutely beautiful. Uh, the American tapes tend to sit more on top of the page and, they, and they're not translucent. The Japanese tapes are actually, they're beautiful. They almost melt right into the page and, and I will, like I said, I will show you in a couple of minutes, a couple of shots of um, different washi tape. And this, um, the other big tool, are pens. Everybody talks about the pens. You'll notice that Riser, or, I'm sorry, Ryder was using a stapler um, and they make a beautiful felt tip pen as well. Uh, the dual brush pens are actually watercolor pens, so they act more like a marker meets watercolor and they are absolutely beautiful but you do want to make sure your pages in your journal are a little thicker because you don't want it to bleed through into the pages um, behind it or even the back of that page. I love the scribbles that matter. Um, I have been a fan since they very first came out. I started bullet journaling kind of when they became a thing, when they started promoting um, their journals from Amazon uh, USA. They started in London, but now they have several offices all over the world, and their journals have evolved over time, um, and they're really big on customer feedback, and that's how they decide what changes they're going to make and uh, what products uh, that they will offer. So just in case you hear the term GSM, that is a term that refers to paperweight and the higher end of the number, the better. So Scribbles That Matter has a really high um, GSM, um, Lecterm and Moleskines and Rodillas are some of the other big brands in the bullet journal game. But again, Michaels has something that the papers a lot thinner than the scribbles that matter, but otherwise it is completely comparable in quality and their bullet journal notebooks are wonderful. So you don't have to spend a lot of money even for a very pretty bound journal. Um, gel pens are really popular. Personally, I like a Pentel pen. They're my favorite. It's just a very basic pen. 
when we were talking in the group last week, I was saying how I'm not a huge fan of gel pens because they run. And one of my artist friends that I asked to join us said that's because you're left-handed. So for your lefties out there, be aware that gel pens tend to be a little more of a challenge for us. It doesn't mean we can't use them, especially if you are using them to draw. But if you are finding that gel pens aren't working in your bullet journals, it might be because your hand is actually going over them before they've dried. A reminder, my bullet journals are by no means show worthy, but that's just the point. The point is that it's supposed to work for you and these systems work for me. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be able to be shown in an art show. It has to work for you. It has to make you happy. And that is exactly what my bullet journal does for me. Uh, like I said, I did start in a composition book, so you will see a few pictures to prove it. And, um, and that's, you know, that's how I started was in a composition book until I really got the hang of what I actually wanted. Okay, I'm back. So what we are going to do now is what I have listed here are just some of the really popular terms in bullet journal groups. Um, if you hear the term bujo, a lot of times you'll hear bujo more than bullet journal, just a shortened term for bullet journal. Um, the disbound notebooks we didn't talk about. They are great. Um, a lot of uh, the people in the group last week said the one thing to be capable of is once they get really, really full that they tend to be harder to turn. So at that point, you might want to take out pages or and either save them in another, um, if there's stuff that things that you want to save, save them in another disbound journal. Or for those of you who um, don't need to keep your dailies or weeklies or monthlies and you're okay with that, you can toss that. Um, nobody says you have to keep your bullet journals, uh, especially, like I said, mine are very minimal, uh, minimalistic, but I do have a lot of projects that I keep track of in, in them, so I like to go back for dates. So I personally do keep all of my bullet journals. I've purchased uh, for myself eight scribbles that matters. Um, journals and I get about four months out of each journal but depending on the journal you get depending on how you use it there really is no average so kind of look at what works for you and don't worry about how long you'll get out of a journal as long as it is useful enough for you that you don't feel like you're putting more work into redoing everything um, because there's so much in your journal. I did try using a note binder. So it was a binder um, that, you know, you put loose leaf paper in, but it works like a notebook rather than the hard cover. Uh, I believe it's made by Five Star. Uh, again, being left-handed, I was using it backwards, but it was kind of a pain um, for some of my spreads because I kept printing them backwards and, and I just got frustrated. So the things that I don't want to put in every time I start a new journal, some of my, like my reading logs and my, you know, movie logs, that kind of stuff, I am still keeping in there because... Um, I don't want to have to redo it every time. So I'm just kind of keeping that as a growing that that'll just continue to grow. And that stays on my home desk. Well, um, my bullet journal travels everywhere with me. It's a planner. It's a project tracker. It's always by my side. Um, when we talk about paper, you hear dot grid. I am one of those people that thought I would be driven crazy by dot grid because it, I, I just thought it would be a distraction. I don't ever want to write online paper again. I've gone so far as to make my own dot grid in the printer um, because I just, I absolutely love it. I love how it fades to the background um, and, and really your writing kind of pops. But again, 
that is a personal choice. Some people like a graph grid, which is just like the graph paper we used in math and science classes kits. Some people like a regular line notebook. Some people do like a blank book. I do like those, but they are harder to find sometimes. So I would definitely, when you get that feeling that you're starting to get close to the end of a notebook before like a, like a few minutes before that that's when you want to start looking for your new book if you don't have a regular like I know I'm going to get another scribble set matters um but if you don't have like a brand journal that you like then then you want to start looking and some people do some people have favorite ones and they change or they have a couple of favorites and depending on the mood and where they are with projects and in their life just because you use one journal for a long time doesn't mean you have to stay with that type of journal it's supposed to be fun so make sure it stays fun and another um, big tip that we want to remind people of is that if it's not fun you're not going to do it but you also don't want to get so caught up in the art another art friend of mine um, that joined the group with us last week was saying how she stopped bullet journaling for a little while because she got so involved in making her spreads that that was all she wanted to do. She wasn't doing the projects that she was writing in and she wasn't using the journal for anything else. So it became a distraction. So it's finding that perfect medium in between what works and what is fun. Um, I personally guarantee you that for every half hour I spend setting up my weekly calendar and, and plans and tasks, I get at least, at least twice as much time back. So um, what we're looking at the bottom here is a Dutch store. And I bring this up because it is super popular and you'll hear about this a lot on your different groups that you're looking on online. And I was really surprised the other day because there were about three or four women in the group that are tremendous artists and they've been bullet journaling forever and they all said that none of them had mastered the Dutch store. And so the, what you're looking at is that those aren't pages that are cut from the journal. There are pages that are added in with tape or washi tape and, and maybe sewn in depending on the type of journal. Nobody has mastered them yet. So if you master it, let me know and show us. Um, show us in the comments. And maybe a tutorial, I would love to be able to do them because it adds space, say so you only need a little more space and you don't need a whole other couple of pages, plus they're adorable. Um, so those are Dutch stores. Uh, grams per square meter, that was the GSM that we were talking about before. And in a lot of the bullet groups, you'll, uh, the Boudreaux groups, you will hear about the level 10 life. The Cumberland Public Library in Rhode Island does have the Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. It is very popular. Um, and what he talks about is the 10 most important areas of a person's life. So what the circle here that you see is supposed to do is it rates where you are now and where you would like to be in each of these areas in your happiness, the amount of time you spend working on those areas, or so like family and friends, the amount of time you spend with them, the healthiness of the relationships. So a level 10 life is ideally where you would be at and your desired level would equal each other in every single area. And as you can see, not every area is meant to be the same because you're gonna have areas that are more important at one time. Um, and again, they can change. Uh, you know, school might be more important, so person, uh, professional development may be more important in career at one point. Health and fitness may take over at another, family and friends, marriage. All of those, the ebbs and flows of your life, so the circle is not always going to look the same, but you will hear a lot about that. And finally, um, we have the Traveler's Journal. The great thing about the Traveler's Journal is like I was talking about how I have to keep redoing spreads every time I get a new journal, and that's why I decided to move to the note binder. Um, this is so you have a lot of little books in one big carrying case. Personally, I find it a little bulky. It's not for me, but in theory, this would be the perfect system for me. So it's just a matter of trying new things, seeing what works, and really figuring out what is going to make 
the most sense in your life and how you use it, your bullet journal and, um, you know, what's the most effective. So we talked about finding inspiration. Pinterest is a gold mine. Instagram is also wonderful. Even if you don't have an Instagram, I got one just so I could look through. Um, and the search terms work on any spread, any site that you're using. Um, but the basic search terms that you see under Instagram are the ones where you'll get the most options coming back. There are so many groups on Facebook. It is bananas. Um, my personal favorite is Bullet Journal Junkies. This group has literally 60,000 people in it, and it is always so positive and so helpful, and people are always sharing their spreads, and sometimes people will share files. Um, and it's just such a happy group. It just really restores my faith in humanity and it always makes me smile and it's wonderful. So bullet journal junkies, thank you. Um, under Google, I have attached a list, uh, a link, I'm sorry, a link that will give you 33 online communities. But again, you could also just go to Google and use those search terms up here. You can also search any type of spread you can think of. So if you wanna track an exercise tracker or a project management tracker or whatever you can think of, or even if you want to have a certain theme like Harry Potter or it's summertime, so like ice cream, whatever you want, you can go to these sites and search it, add it to either Bujo or Layout, and it's just a gift, a plethora of many, 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 many gifts. And before we end, I did want to just give you the sites for the that I spoke about earlier. So for washi tapes, Alibaba, again, everything is coming from Asia. It usually takes a minimum of 30 days. If you can wait, the price is worth it. But more importantly, the quality is just absolutely gorgeous. And wish.com. Um, it's kind of like an American Alibaba. It is great for all sorts of craft supplies. I haven't tried them. We've, we've used them for work for craft supplies, but I haven't used them for washi tape yet. Um, so I can't guarantee the quality, um, but I'm sure that it's probably wonderful as well. Um, the journals, the popular journals and the pens that we discussed earlier, and that's all I have for today. So what I want you to do is I want you to share in the comments some of your spreads, what you're doing with your bullet journal, what kind of bullet journal you have. Are you loving it? Are you needing more inspiration? Keep an eye on our website because we are going to plan some virtual planning sessions so people can bullet journal, set up their bullet journals and talk and chat and share what they're doing with each other. And we have lots of events coming up this fall. So keep an eye out for the calendar on www.cumberlandlibrary.org. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to the channel. We have uh, some videos up now and that is only going to grow. And in the comments, let us know what you would like to see us do for programming and we will make it happen. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night and enjoy those bullet journals.